1977 and Duolingo. So I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better slowly. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah. You're doing really good. So 77, ah, 77. Wow. Oh, 177 wow. days. But, you know, I grew up speaking it when I was young, but my parents stopped and then uh, had to sort of regroup and, and learn it again, as it were. Yeah, wow. that's not so easy later. Sometimes. It is, and you have to practice. Yeah, it comes so natural when we're kids. Yeah. So, so much easier to learn it and understand it, the connotations and even the slang words and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So, Carlos, where are you talking to us from? I'm talking to you from Burbank, California, from my little office. Okay. And, oh, all right. All right. How is it over there? Mm. The weather's great today. You know, I actually did a voiceover job at a place called LA Studios with the protocol in place, entered through the back one person at a time, take your temperature. Brought my own headphones. Uh, been doing work from home in my home booth, and my daughter's been doing work as well. So we're good. You know, it's it's as it's as um, precarious as everywhere else. And yeah. uh, what area of uh, you're in Los Angeles as well? No, nah, um, we're in sunny Florida. Florida. We're, Florida. We're in La Florida right now. Mm -hmm. Cerca de Tampa. Tampa Bay area. Tampa. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, it's nice over there. I've been to Tampa. To play the improv years ago. Oh, wow. the one yeah. in Ybor City. Is that? Yeah, Ybor the one right, right downtown near where. Uh, yeah, right downtown. Or. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's a great area. There's a great steak restaurant there. We, I was there for a con the last time I was there at the convention center. Burns, Burns Steakhouse or. or it's uh, right by the improv. Fle Fleming's. Fleming's. No, it, it's a family-owned one. Yeah, um, Burns. Burn Steakhouse. Yeah, yeah, it was very good. It was in Hyde Park. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, oh my gosh, I that remember. Is a great, oh my, that's I so old, that place is. Boring. I know. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Um, and hopefully we'll get to go back and everything will open up in 2021, it looks like. You know, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see, right? Hopefully, right. <laughs> but you know what? You What you do is kind of. You, you you're an actor right in Reno 911 but you also you you also do a lot of voices so for you yeah. probably the voices are you could do them you know if you have your own studio and so forth at home so that doesn't disrupt you too too bad thankfully you know but no. I know for the acting part of it it's probably a little bit different it, it, I'm very lucky voiceover seems to still be going there's protocols at some studios that try to open up but yeah having a home studio which I had to modify there's a company actually in in uh, Florida called Sweetwater that I, I ordered a couple of extra, you know, things for my booth to make it um, sound ready and, and microphone ready. And without spending too much money, now I can record and the engineers do a lot on their part to, to keep you going. So, yeah, I've actually had quite a bit of work since I adapted my booth. So it's been great. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. awesome. Well, you know what? It just it, it just kind of catapult it's, it's kind of like a pet catapult for certain people too for certain things that you when you when you have something that you can actually focus on more too and and because when you're home hopefully you can focus more too but with your kind of career and some other careers too you know it's it it hasn't been too too bad so for that, yeah for that we're grateful because yeah, we yeah. we do things from home too so yeah. you know you gotta try and be creative these days yeah. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to try to send you guys a review of our film. If yeah. I send it to myself at Carlos at Carlos Ellis Rocky. Dot, hold on, and then I'm going to try to transfer the link to the chat. Okay. And uh, the movie is called. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I did send it to myself, didn't I? Uh, let's see. Ah, I sent it. I'm going to go to sent mail. That's why. Ha ha. I think I'm in the private chat. Bueno. Yes, I got that. I got the buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. So here we go. Okay. Apple C. Now I'm going to go over to chat and go Apple V. And this is a review of my film, Witness Infection. And you can go to witnessinfection.com. I co wrote it with my friend from Florida. I believe from Miami, 
Uh, her name is Jill Michelle Melian, and uh, we met years ago at the Latino Laugh Festival in San Antonio, and we've become friends over the years. Toured together as a comic. She played my sister on Reno 911, and we oh. co-wrote this uh, comedy horror film about mob families and zombies. And it uh, wow. it's two world film festivals. We got a good review, but yeah, that was part of the original question: is that when we're slow or when on camera's not working, you know, we find ways to keep busy and make our own projects, do voiceover, etc. So that's what sure. we've been doing. Sure, that makes sense. that's great. That looks great. So tell us more about it. Tell us more about witness infection. Well, in 2016, Joe Michelle Melian and I got together. I said, I have an idea about making a movie with zombies and mob families. And, <laughs> and she says, well, what about this? And we started to build a structure and she's definitely the structure person and, and dialogue person. And we started to build a story. And then what we did is we wrote for actors we knew could play the part. So it made it really easy to write for characters because we knew who these people were. We knew how to write dialogue for them. Right. So we wrote it. We had a table read. People like the table read. We started waiting around for a little bit of financing and said, you know, instead of waiting, I'm going to try to self-finance this and we'll do a little Indiegogo and see what we can do and come up with some money. So that got us started right away. We didn't have to wait around. So we did another table read with the actors we wanted to cast. They liked it. And then we started shooting in December of 2018, I think. And then finished just this last June uh, with some pickups. And actually, we went in the other day to do some ADR, additional dialogue replacement uh, on, on a scene in the dog groomers that was kind of hollow. So we fixed that. And, you know, we went to the uh, uh, <clears throat> Horror Hound Film Festival in Cincinnati and won Best Picture. Uh, we won at the Die Laughing Film Festival. We won Best Picture. Uh, we won some awards for directing and make practical effects at the Frostbite Festival, and we were just in the Portland Horror Film Festival. So we're making the rounds. We have some deals in place for distribution. Our, our movie sort of had its first premiere at a non-film festival, rather the old Latino La Festival, which was created by my former roommate and friend Jeff Valdez. It's now called the Ha Fil Ha Comedy Festival, and that took place in San Antonio, and that's where we had our screening. And so hopefully from that, we'll also get uh, a distribution offer and we're, we're in the midst of negotiating and, and we'll see where, where it goes. But it's, uh, it was a labor of love. And this particular uh, review uh, kind of saw it as such. Like we really took pride in casting our people, getting the right director, filming it right, 15 days shoot, <laughs> everything has to go right. And what a blast, you know, what a blast. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. And, and for us, for Jill and I, it was, it was sort of an expression that Latinos can do art that's not necessarily centered on Latino subject matter. In other words, these, these are mob guys that are Italian, and I play a guy named Carlo Sorelli, and my son is Rob Belushi, and I'm Carlo. You're breaking my bulls here. you got to help me out. <laughs> so, you know, as hey, it's not, it's not like a natural, man. Yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, buddy. Are you kidding me? My wife's Italian. Get out of here from Jersey. Wow. Yeah, but, uh, you know, Argentinians are Italian, right? Yes. Uh, Argentina, pero, uh, yeah, we wanted to say that, you know, like much like me doing Rocco or different voices that, um, you know, that. this is another form of expression that, that Latins can contribute to. There's obviously many wonderful Latin stories, and one of my heroes is, two of my heroes are Jorge Gutierrez and Sandra Equiwa, who created El Tigre and Book of Life. Wow. And, you know, those stories are more traditionally Mexican um, towards what the history of, you know, what Jorge grew up with. And, you know, then I'm an artist that has Argentinian parents, but it was an Americanized. And then this is the way I see the world. And so that's what we're proud of is that we can make art of any kind, you know, like Robert Rodriguez's his company, you know, El Rey, you know, Spy Kids and Shark Boy and Lava Girl was one of his first films. I know because I have two daughters. But, um, yeah, just it's just about creating content, whatever that content is. Right. So yeah. so tell us where, where the your family background, you said Argentina, but talk mm -hmm. about your family a little bit, your, the history of your, of your roots. But yeah, both parents came over in the 50s. My mom's maiden name is Olmedo. My dad's name is Alasraki, which actually – we thought it was Basque, but it's actually Sephardic Jewish. So uh, some role on his side of the family, yeah. Sephardic Jews in, in Spain were driven out from there, Turkey to France to Argentina. Yeah. 
Wow. She married a woman named Toraka. Uh, I think the the my mom's uh, sister in law is Carlo Maggio. Carlo Maggio. So we've got Italian, <laughs> Swiss, everything. That sounds like a good that's mix. A, that's man. amazing. So yeah. so you know all about the Sephardic Jews from Spain, then? Yeah. You know the history. That's we teach on that. It's we amazing. Actually, we actually been um, and we are descendants too. Yeah. For, oh wow. Yes. Probably like the last four or five years, About we've five just years, kind of yeah. been awakened to it, yeah. so to speak. Learning yeah. the beautiful. roots. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's awesome that you you said that. That's just amazing. For yeah. Us because we we teach on that. You know. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, tell us how you got into all of this. You know, the acting, the the voices, Voice all. And then you got to do a couple of voices. And, and then we want some voices, you know? <laughs> yeah. So here's a kid growing up with my dad went to British schools in Argentina, so he didn't have an accent. You know, he and his sister went to British schools in Loma, Argentina. She went to a girl's school. My dad went to St. Albans. And so they left speaking pretty much straight English. And my mom, no, you know, a stop sign, no me digas, a stupid. Oh, yeah. no. You know, wait, we have the same mom. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Este, yeah, you know, beaches is, is not beaches where you go. I know, beaches. that's the worst one. Well, no. one of the worst ones. Vamos one. para los beach. Vamos para el beach. Los beaches. No. Uh, para nadar, no. La fue. Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. So I grew up hearing those those different dialects, and then my best friend Kevin, his parents were from Glasgow, Scotland. You know, John and Mary Haney, and I had Uncle Danny would hang around, and Aunt Liz would hang around, and she would talk like this to their voice way up here. And then I watched British comedy, so I had this menagerie of, of dialects swimming around me. And in college, I had a professor Edilberto Cahucam from the Philippines, and so. They used to live near the ceremony center and I would go hang out with them there. And then I just started soaking up voices as a kid. And I think that was my precursor to being a voice actor. And I really didn't get at, into acting. I played sports until college when I did mime. And then I did some stand up comedy. And then Rocco's Modern Life came by in 91. And they didn't want an Australian. So I tried like a Bruno Kirby type of guy. I tried like this. I'm a wallaby. I tried Woody Allen. Look at my pouch. I'm a wallaby. And then finally I just said, well, he kind of looks like this. And what about something like this? Well, uh, hello, I'm Rocco. And they're like, yeah, let's try that. And then cut to, yay, we're making a pilot. Cut to, it's going to go to series for Nickelodeon. And then I won the San Francisco comedy competition in 93. And with that and booking Rocco, I said, okay, I'm moving to Los Angeles. And that's what catapulted me into the world of everything, you know, voice acting and acting. Wow. What year was that? Ninety I moved in 94 to Los Angeles and I was already touring as a comedian. So I was working as a comic on the road, stopping in LA, flying in from San Francisco out of Oakland into to Burbank to do Rocco's Modern Life and a couple other cartoons. And then I finally just moved in January of 94 with Jeff Alez, uh, the weekend of the big earthquake. I, I took all these trips in my car. I loaded up the loft. I arranged my furniture. I went home on a Friday back to the Bay Area to get one last load. And that was that Saturday, the earthquake just shook everything up. And I missed that big one in 94. But I was at Candlestick Park in 1989 during that earthquake, during the Baseball World Series. So. Wow. That was a huge one. So, yeah, that's my kind of whole background. I was always an athlete, but I always loved, you know, you know, R.I.P. Carl Reiner, you know, who I used to watch the Dick Van Dyke show. And, of course, he was Alan Brady. And I probably wasn't the only guys that imitate uh, Maury Amsterdam. But, uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I grew up with that stuff. Carol Burnett, Beverly oh, Hillbillies. Oh, uh, I love, oh my I gosh. Love Carol Burnett. <laughs> Sure. Mary Tyler Moore, Bob New Holland, Good Times, The Jeffersons. Oh, man. And I knew I, all those shows, right? I knew I wanted to do something like that. I just know how to go about it. Go about it. I never thought about drama classes or anything like that. Yeah. And then when I came to LA, I started taking some improv, impromptu workshops. I did stand up comedy. I took acting lessons with the, the late, great Cliff Osman, who was my scene study teacher. And that really, really prepared me, I think, for 
the Reno 911 experience, which, which was just going to be a sketch show back in 2001. And uh, they decided that they didn't want to make that Fox. So we went home and thought about characters for what Ben, Tom and Carrie said, we're going to make fun of cops. It's going to be called Reno 911. Think about a character. So, okay, I think uh, there's, my roommate was Dan Garcia from Merced, California. And Dan was like, oh, dog, gone it. Dan was, you know, very, very dark complected, but he was totally country. And his wife, Linda, is Irish. And he would just like listen to country music. I'll tell you something, Carlos, dog gone. You know, <laughs> as Mexican as you could be Mexican, but Dan was country. And so I thought maybe I'll name this guy Garcia after him and just be a little bit more uh, on top of it, a little bit more rules laden, a little bit, uh, you know, not too sure about other cultures. Let's just put it that way. And then, of course, they paired me up with Cedric Yarborough, and then, and then a yeah. partnership was born, and and off we went. You know, so everything just kind of flowed from one thing to the next. And in between that, in '97, there was the Taco Bell Chihuahua, which really sort of catapulted me more so the dog. I mean, but I got a little bit of publicity <laughs> out of that, you know, and it. It certainly had a share of a, a little bit of controversy, but for the most part, people seem to love that commercial, obviously, and that that catapulted me into another tier. So. It was yeah. huge. That commercial was huge. People go to eat that. And Reno, Reno too, was like that was a that was a smash. Yeah. yeah, and and then of course before Reno, there, there was this show. Yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, I tell you what, yeah, my son kids, grew up on that. All of our kids love that show. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just woke up, a sweet wallaby, and Mr. Cooker, please! I don't know. <laughs> I was, we just go on cat dog. Hey, cat dog! <laughs> and I was Laszlo on Camp Laszlo at Cartoon Network, and a uh, guy named Clam who was, uh, yeah, Laszlo. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's amazing. That's just amazing. I find that amazing that you could just switch from character to character to character like that, and you have those little details of personalities and so yeah. forth like that. yeah the the job i'm most proud of and i certainly don't take credit for the character because it's billy crystals but in kingdom hearts 3 and for a lot of the merchandise i got to do mike wazowski sound alike stuff and you know that's where you really gotta do it and 40 hours later you're like all right sally god this stuff is driving me crazy hello Roz. you look beautiful today did i say that oh my god my eye <laughs> yeah. um that was when the yeah, lot of hours like to, to do and something that I'm proud of to, to say that, hey, I can emulate this character that Billy Crystal created because really he does all the groundwork, right? He he creates this beautiful character and then yeah. you're responsible. Like if you go to the uh, Monster Laugh Floor at Disney World, that's me. Hey folks, five more minutes in lines, texting your jokes. We're gonna have a great time. Everybody's having a great time except for that guy. <laughs> uh, that was one of my first jobs as Billy Crystal. And when I went and saw it, I went, Oh, I've gotten so much better since then. But I said, it's okay. I think people believe it. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you close your eyes, you can't tell the difference, honestly. Yeah. It's and really of course, weird. I was on Elena Vavalor. I played uh, Skylar. Um, in if you, if you saw Book of Life, I was General Posada. Oh, people, yeah. Okay. We need an army. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. big, and then you pick yourself a feisty one. <laughs> so yeah and that's really again getting back to jorge and sandra being so generous with their creativity and, and and sharing it and saying yes be in this movie do what you do you know we that's the beautiful thing about voiceover we're granted a, a lot of uh opportunities to be anybody so and I, I luckily had that background of hearing a spanish dialect hearing a scottish dialect watching british television so yeah, the ability to just look like this, but to be somebody else as rendered by artists is is pretty cool. That is. That's, that, that's, that's, that's a that's, that's a, a great uh, talent to have. A great talent because it's not easy switching switching accents like that. Yeah, and I've even too. caught like we've even caught in movies where actors who don't speak English English from England they you could you could kind of tell. They yeah. Just, on it on top of it and they veer off a little bit you know it's hard it's one of the hardest things now for voiceover like when you're doing a caricature let's say on the new looney tunes which is not actually the one that's out now i played a guy named tad tucker 
who is kind of like a Steve Irwin knockoff. Now, look at this. I'm going to shine this post with this buffer, and I'm going to take it all the way. And it was very broad. But if I'm expected to do a real Australian, like to make you believe it's one in a movie, it's a, it's a whole different game because I'm going to fall out of it. Yeah. I've better luck with Glasgow because that's something I've more experience with. You know, the way the intonations, the way the letters the letters go. Sometimes they say better. Sometimes they say better. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I have more experience with. So I'm more likely to, to sustain that one all the way through as yeah. a person Australian. I'm going to fall out. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. fall out. Wow. That's I really and you know I'm doing a project called Treze, which is Filipino, and I'm learning that much like in sort of in Argentina or Mexico that as you go up the financial strat uh, uh, status, the accent becomes less uh, accented. So I learned that you know if you're going to Manila and you're going to to pay for their food, maybe the lower class is going to pronounce that F as a P. You need to pay for your food. But as you go higher, that that will become more of an F. Okay. Like the word to be, I'm going to visit you tomorrow. Visit would be more somebody from the street. But if you go higher, they will say visit. And it will be more of the Spanish influence uh, and less of the Tagalog influence. Like getting coached with those types of things to to really get it right. And, And sometimes, yeah, you need to be coached a lot. Even on Spanish sometimes because... You know, I, I might miss an, an A, E, E, O, U. I might, <laughs> might anglicize it just a little bit. Repeat after me. Yeah. <laughs> you know the one that kills me on Duolingo? Two The, the numbers, 28 or 20 or oi. It never gives me when I have to, it'll, I'll go oi, 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 oi. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be precise. It's like, come on. <laughs> I mean, I remember for kicks in junior high, I wanted to do I did a Spanish class and all, all I ever did was argue with the teacher the whole entire time. But he still gave me an A, which was nice. <laughs> Good. Yeah, because he was afraid you were gonna argue with yeah, him. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. That's it. That's not how we say it. We get an A for everywhere. <laughs> wow. So in your in your house, did you mainly speak like more English and Spanish or? Yes. When we were kids, it would say, ¿Dónde está la palita? Yeah, que, que, uh, ellos quieren, vos quieres, vos quieres uh, fideos con mantecas. So we heard that. And then as we were growing older, in the 60s and 70s, I said, no, nah, that, you know, it'll make it hard for your kids to learn English. They'll have funny yeah. accents. So just Americanize them. Just speak English. And so a lot of parents yeah. did that. A yeah. lot of parents did that. Yeah. In our, in our house, we had to speak Spanish. And then outside of the house, we could speak yeah. English. Yeah. Because like that. that's yeah. really the only way. But yeah. a lot of families were afraid yes. to, um, to, to have that accent to have you know their children go out and maybe mix up yeah, the words yeah, you know and so yeah. now we can spanglish size right yeah espanol inglés and it's not a big deal you know dame cafe give me a coffee it's not a big deal now but back then it it was a big deal you know it was like yeah okay, only english you know only english so yeah the bad thing about teaching your kids spanish is that you can't talk about them that's the only them. thing that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what language we can use here, but my mom used to use the quintessential expression, la plank que te parió carajo. <laughs> <laughs> I say, la puerta, la puerta que te parió. That's, That's good. the clean version, but uh, yeah. You know what movie really handled that very well was uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse with Miles Morales. Yeah. Because they're from Brooklyn, and I think the mom is probably Dominican, and she's speaking to Miles in Spanish, and he's in, answering in part English and part Spanish. They just weaved in, in perfectly. Where, yeah, of course, they're in Brooklyn. His last name is Morales, and the mother's like, Miles, tú tienes que you know, llevar sus libros a la escuela. You have to take your books to school. Bueno, all right, mamá. You know, so it was just, it was sure. really well written and really well woven into, uh, it wasn't forced onto this, you know, general audience. And sure. 
it was a really good depiction of how people speak. My mom used to say that all the time. Okay, you can go, pero you have to be home at this time. Sí. You know. Si yeah. no, yeah. <laughs> if not, forget it. Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they, the Italian mom said that. Si no, oh, yeah. forget about it. Yeah. Forget oh, about yeah. That's a, those are the Italian Cubans from Tampa. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, forget about it, pero te voy a dar uno. <laughs> Joey Coco Diaz. <laughs> so, so what kind of projects you got coming up besides um, the one you just told us about? What what other stuff you got coming up? And and is is the current climate of, of the world preventing certain things right now? Got some things on hold or... You know, um, I'm working on Treze, which is the you know a graphic novel um, that's coming out in 2021. Of course, the Casa Grande is a Nickelodeon uh, based on Miguel Puga's life with having an extended family. Uh, that's ongoing. And new episodes of the Casa Grande. I play Car I play Carlos, who's pretty anglicized, but he's able to say Maria. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh guapamole, I love. And then I play Sergio, the parent. Oh boy, this family's crazy. No me digas. And then I play Frito Filipponio. Yeah, uh, you're not gonna finish that role. I'll have some. Um, wow. The Casa Grandes. I'm working on. I just did a big guest role on American Dad. Um, wow. uh, Camp Coral, which is a spinoff from SpongeBob. And uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm allowed to say the character, but he kind of talks like this. Them ladies are like here, barely. Every once in a while, I say the word too. And uh, so it's Camp Coral. There's Trece. There's Casa Grandes. Um, there's a new Nickelodeon project coming out that I don't know if I can say the name with of. Okay. But that's gonna come out soon, more later. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we're working on my movie Witness Infection, and then pitching uh, a show to Quibi, an animated show, which, with the current climate, will be will have some changes made because it it was a concept that was about four. Uh, black gentleman sitting at a cafe with a Filipino waiter and you know the two of the members are white doing black characters and I had a, a long conversation with Cedric Yarbrough is that really during the riots and the protests and stuff the protests and we said yeah they, you know what we really love we love these actors we know what they can do and yeah are they technically you know taking a role no they're doing the voices but yeah let, why not let's think about them being white characters so instead of them like, hey, you know what I was talking about last week? Let's make them from New Orleans. And talk like Ed Orgeron from LSU to go. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's his own kind of thing. That's right. And we sort of agreed that, yeah, listen, we don't have to recast it. We can reanimate it and have these characters now play. And that makes my group more dynamic. Now we have two African-Americans and maybe two, one white guy from New Orleans and one straight up white guy, you know, just like, well, gentlemen, I, it, you can check it out. The project was called... Um, uh, off the curb, there are five little episodes and behind the scenes on YouTube, and uh, you know you can check it out for yourself and see what you think. But yeah, that was one of the accommodations that we were willing to make. Like, let's change, let's make this more current, let's be sort of sensitive to what's going on, and uh, and, and do it right. Sure. But yeah, other than that, no, I'm I'm afforded a lot of opportunities. Um, you know, maybe in the movie Coco. As a book of book of life, they really wanted to to cast people that were of Mexican descent, and I was like, "Yeah, that's cool. Obviously, it's a, it's a Mexican story." So, my my buddy Lombardo Boyar had a really big role, a nice role in that, and so, yeah, those types of things are I'm completely fine with. You know, yeah. let's if your stories are about a certain culture, then then hire the culture all the way. The writers, the producers, if you can, the gaffers, the directors, the DP. Why not? You know, why not? Yeah, then it says on as authentic as it could be. Yeah. That's important to a lot of people, so. Especially, yeah, because if I'm a, as an art, you know, Argentinian descendant can tell a story about Italian mobsters, you know, you know, that, that's a pretty good deal on my end. So I've, I've gotten the best of both worlds. I can, especially with voiceover, I can, or if it's an on-camera project, you know, I'm always gunning for that South American guy that's like, well, uh, playing a lawyer, I would like to represent you, but at this point, I don't have the resources, you know, somebody like that I can play that that's authentic to a yeah. real person, you know, that was pretty good. 
But yes, it's because of what I grew up with, what I heard, you know, the, that dialect it's, and meeting other people. that Because I always like to say that my Spanish is a version of that. My, when I speak Spanish, I tell people, my Spanish is like, hello, I am wanting to have go to the bus stop for to take the <laughs> for across the country. Okay, I understand you. You're not quite right, but pretty good. So I think that's where I went my Spanish, you know. Wow. So... But it, it was always about emulating somebody or somebody that's real. I think that's what makes it a less of a stereotype, and it makes it credible. Right. That if I'm doing a character, uh, even if it's you know somebody like um, Skyler from Let's Go Princesa, it's based on somebody I've known or heard, a real type of sound or a person, sure. and so it lends a little authenticity to a character that you've never heard before. So. Well, you know, I played Felipe on Handy Manny. I'm a Phillips head screwdriver. And I said, <laughs> the abuelito is like, hola, herramientas. But I always try to, where have I heard those voices before? Or uh, uh, Jorge Posada in Book of Life was based on a woman named Raquel, who Car Carlos was from Spain, but she used to have this husky voice. ¿Dónde están las niñas? Las niñas. And so I kind of, I just heard that. Growing up, so I gave him a more masculine sound. General Posada, Maria, what have you done? <laughs> and, you know, I just hear my mom, I hear my neighbors, and so you just recreate that and spit it back out. So yeah. Hey, so so besides acting and doing voiceovers, what's your passion like? Like, like and comedy. What's your passion like? Is what hobbies do you like to do? And you know, back in the day, I, I skydived for 15 years, and I stopped in 2010 with family on the way and marriage, and I loved that. When COVID was not around, I would go to the tunnel and skydive in the indoor tunnel. But now I ride motorcycles. I ride with my friend uh, Nacho Sericchio. Uh, we go up the coast and stop and have conversations, and that's nice. Um, I was playing tennis. Um I liked, I love swimming. I was swimming again. I just got in the pool. And I, that was my workout, my jam. So, right. you know, I wasn't playing tennis. I was swimming. Tried a little softball, but of course we had to stop. So I'll probably get back to that. But yeah, the outlet, the, the, the most fun for me is the motorcycle riding. It's very freeing. Uh, I have a, a nice uh, Ducati. It's not a fast one, it's one of their cafe racers. And, uh, it's a nice cruiser bike, and and uh, I like that a lot. So that gives me joy. Wow, That's cool! And watching good television shows. A big fan of. I like the old Penny Dreadful and the new Penny Dreadful by Mark Logan. Um, uh, we just finished. I I finally finished uh, uh, Friday Night Lights and uh, a series called Alone on Netflix, where oh. survivalists are dropped off by themselves to see how long they can survive. Oh, <laughs> item. But yeah, those things. And, you know, swimming, dunking in our 14-foot above-ground vinyl pool that we put up every wow. summer with the kids, you know? That great. That's nice. That's Camping great. in the backyard. You know, yeah. Daddy's got to go up to go to the bathroom again, so I'll be back, Zip. <laughs> you hear the rustling in the bush? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Raccoons, like... <laughs> Hanging out with the kids, you know? Yeah. A lot of that stuff now. A lot of stuff with the, the familia, bike rides and basketball hoop we pull it out to the driveway we went out to see the poppies in palmdale uh when they were blooming in may we uh you know we're going to take short trips here and there where it's safe and we do a lot of zoom stuff we play zoom game nights um hey, um, hey. i have a television in the garage and uh so we can sit outside and when and if the mls comes back i'm a big lafc supporter carlitos bella yeah. Um, so when they play their games, I'm going to have a few friends over at a safe distance and uh, watch those games. So that was my passion too, is going to Banco de California stadium to watch LAFC. I really, really love that experience. So, so what, what is your, uh, here's, here's the most important question. What is your favorite Latino food that you like? God, there's such good Mexican food around here. Oh, I would, I would say at, there's some good Peruvian food too because there's Amigo Peruanos, Giacomo, Jessica, and they make there's some good Peruvian food. There's some great Cuban food around here. Oh, okay. Bife de Lomo uh, at, at Malbec 
owned by fellow Argentinians. And para, para, para el um, pastel or postre is uh, panqueques con dulce de leche. Wow. That's my favorite dessert. But I, I like a good Argentinian steak or a parillada with... Durian? Yeah, with chimichurri. Do you, do, you like, do you like Cuban sandwiches? Yes. We, we do. We're the uh, owners and creators of the International Cuban Sandwich Festival in, in Egypt. Mm. <laughs> oh, when I can go, I'm going. Years. Oh, my God. Right. Yeah. I love all the plantains and the rice and the Cuban the uh, chicken. Yeah. And, you know, I love all that stuff. And I love, you know, enchiladas and, and fajitas. Enchiladas. Empanadas, sí, como no, hay un lugar que se llama World of Empanadas y hay un mercado que se llama Mercado Buenos Aires, cerca de mi casa. Es más, es más auténtica de las otras o los otros, pero hay muchos lugares que, que ganan comida de cualquier cultura. And that's my youngest. Hey. 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 How many, how, many, how many kids do you have? Yo, uh, tenemos dos hijas. Ella oh. tiene seis años y la otra tiene nueve años. Se llama Riley. Y Riley es un actor. Mm. Y, how is it? Yeah, yeah, she's working on a Nickelodeon show. Can't, can't do the name, but it's, it's going to be a nice one. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, tons of food. So the favorite one, I have to say favorite is, yeah, boy, when I get a good Argentinian steak and a mm -mm -mm. Yes. Uh, that's pretty darn good. But, oh, yeah, Cuban God. sandwiches sound great. Yeah. 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 If, you, if you ever make it to Los Angeles, one of our biggest, one of our winners for the world's best Cuban sandwich about two years ago was uh, Los Cochinitos in, in Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Yeah. Los yeah. Cochinitos. Los mm -hmm. Cochinitos. They were in Los Angeles. They're in Los Angeles. Yeah. They just opened one in West Palm Beach now. So. Wow. I will That's definitely. Been a while. And then we have, uh, if you're ever in South Korea, we had <laughs> <laughs> we had a contestant from South Korea called the uh, the Tampa Sandwich Bar. They have two places in South Korea now. Wow. They, won, they won in our con. They came from. Uh, yeah, they South came Korea. all the way from South Korea. Two yeah. years. Yeah. Two years, right? Two years in a row. Yeah, they were yeah. actually going to come this year, pero ya tú sabes. Yeah, they, they were yeah. The corona. Yeah. <laughs> basta, para. Yeah, yeah. we had to shift, shift everything to the end of the year. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I, so, hope to, I hope to partake in some of that delicious food for sure. That would be really good. Yeah, we'll, have really to, good. we'll get the information yeah. to you. Yeah. For the festival. It's usually in March, the end of March, but we had to shift it to November 8th. I'm typing my email. Mi yeah. oh, hey, hey. correo right. electrónico. El correo electrónico. I remember when I first heard that, I was like, how does mail run? Corre el correo. Bueno, Carlos a Carlos a las Okay. I just sent you también his oh, email and the website. Yeah, oh, that's our, that's our website. Oh, wait. Cuban My bad. Festival. Hold on. I'm going to take it. Cuban Sandwich Festival back I'm, 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 I'm up. Type it again. So the first one's no good. There oh, we go. Okay. Same, same with there us. You go. And you know what, Carlos? I know you said you like empanadas too because we host Oh, a, we do the... We host the Top Latino Chef Contest. And in, Ooh. And in Taste that of contest, Latino. Yeah, in that contest, we usually include uh, paella. Oh, yeah. Paella, ceviche. How can I forget paella? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got it complicated. No, right? I got to complicate everything because, you know. Ceviche, <laughs> menudo, everything. Yeah, yeah, all of it. <laughs> Wait, I, yeah, estaba en Madrid en 2000 y la paella uh, acá es riquísimo. Yeah, yeah. Riquísima. It's, it's amazing. Wow. The paella is uh, that's, I mean, it's, whoo. Oh, no, another one. Latino. Me. I'm sorry. I ah, that's, a, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful. Oh, that's the kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a couple of years ago, maybe yeah, a year and a half. Oh, God bless you. Parecen twine, casi, casi, right? Yeah. 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 Pero se van por do, dos y media años. Oh, okay. Yeah. Está bueno. Está bueno. Yeah. 
So is there anything else you want to share with us before we, um, you yeah, know? Yeah, ask one more question. Yeah, and you can ask one more question. All right. Who, who has always been your hero and inspiration? Uh, Arthur Ashe, way early on. I just remember reading Days of Grace and just how he handled himself and he conducted himself. Oh, boy, I aspire to be that, you know, at least publicly that level-headed. But that guy went through a lot, a lot. Arthur Ashe, you know, I have some friends. There's a guy here, and you can go to Michael's Learning Place, M-Y-C-H-L-S Learning Place. Ed Lynch created this place for people, mostly kids and adults with autism. He has a center in Ingle, Inglewood, California, and he helps people – work with their autism, tries to get them independent, encourages their music, their art. Their, and yeah, that guy, he lost, and it always gets me, he lost his daughter, Michael, when she was five years old from complications from her sort of uh, type of autism. And he dedicated his life to helping people with autism. Hero, hero, hero. That is true. That is. Wow, He's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. So is there anything else you want to want to share from your heart or from Yeah, you know what? It's just it's it's kind of cool. I I am pretty lucky. It's always kind of hard for me to sort of find a niche in the Latino culture because I, I'm pretty white. I have this experience of, you know, Argentina and I'm growing up blue collar American, but uh, I'm glad that this side gets to get pulled out of me and uh, because it is part of who I am. And it sometimes is. it's dormant and sometimes it's in public storage. And sometimes I get to bring it out. And so I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying sort of being uh, inclusive or included in the Latin community. It's, it's pretty cool. That's, That's good. Awesome. That's you know, awesome. we have a lot of talent. And I think that by um, people hearing, especially like the younger generation, hearing that you are, that they can identify with that, right? And they yeah. can say, hey, look, you know what? He's doing it. I could do it too. It don't matter. I got a little bit of a Spanish accent right now. It don't matter. I'm going to make it work for me. Yeah. I think it's important for you to embrace all of it, you know, and that's how all of us should, right? Because yeah. our colors are beautiful. Our colors are beautiful and you have the whole palette. So why did, you know, why just stick to one? Just right. dip around. Yeah. Right. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm flattered and I'm flattered. Yeah. So we are so diversified as a, as a culture within itself. Yeah. We have Udio, we got, we got uh, African American. We even have Irish thrown in there. Oh yeah. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that one before. Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah. we, we, we also are ministers uh, yeah. and, and we always like to pray for people we interview. So if it's okay, we'd like to pray for you. Sure. And and um, we'd love to do that as soon as this helicopter goes by. <laughs> <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> My mom, if you look her up, Nina Olmedo Jacanod was one of the first Latin American women ordained as a, an Episcopal minister. Wow. Wow. She became Methodist after that, but yeah. Oh, that's, that's amazing. pretty that's, amazing. That's awesome. I will gladly accept your prayers and blessings, though. Okay. All right. Let's All right. do it. Let's so, do okay. it. Mm -hmm. Father, we just come to you in the mighty name and through the blood of your son, Jesus, Lord. I just want to give you thanks for this time with, with my brother, Carlos. And I pray, Father God, that you keep him and his daughters, his wife, his family, Father, all safe, Lord. Your angels surround them and protect them. They're going in and coming out and wherever they go, whatever they do, bless him and his household with provision and favor always. And Father, always be with him. Open mighty doors for him, Father God. Doors uh, and close the doors that he does not need to go through, Lord. And open the doors that you want him to go through. And always guide him in the light and in the true positive way, Lord, of, of, your, of your light, Father. Always let your voice be with him. Always let your presence be around him and his family. And bless him in, in all the years to come and his children and his children's children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, Thanks. hey, now you got some uh, friends over in Florida. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, let's keep in touch and anything we could do for you. Like even your daughter, when she starts doing more and more stuff, keep us keep us yeah. posted because we want to share all that you positive will. news. Yeah. Absolutely. I will keep posted of everything. It's so uh, mucho gusto 
a, a conocerlo, lo, conocerlo, I think so. Sí, sí, conocerlo. Sí, y, y Dios lo bendiga. Dios le bendiga. Oh. God bless you and your beautiful family. Gracias, thank you. Talk thank you. you. God bless you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.